Hello everyone, Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware here with the brand new Asus Zephyrus G14 updated for 2022. This latest version of the machine is rocking Ryzen 6000 series processors and the latest Radeon RX 6000S series graphics. I'm going to give you a quick tour, check out some benchmarks and detail the machine the best I can next. There are a couple things that make this updated Asus Zephyrus G14 special. First, it's one of the earliest machines built around Ryzen 6000 series mobile processors. So the Ryzen 6000 series is based on an existing CPU architecture. It's based on Zen 3, but an updated version of Zen 3 that has been optimized for mobile applications. This latest iteration of the core can essentially get into and out of power states more quickly and has been optimized to use less power. It also has been augmented with an updated RDNA 2 based iGPU. So the integrated GPU in this machine, the Radeon 680M, has essentially the same features as other Radeon 6000 series parts, but scaled down for on-processor graphics applications. This particular machine, however, also has a discrete Radeon RX 6800S. If you recall, back at CES, AMD announced these new Radeon RX 6000 S series processors. They're essentially power optimized as well. They can achieve higher clocks and they're linked to faster memory to boost performance. Before I continue, I should probably get some specs out of the way quickly. So this particular configuration of the Zephyrus G14 for 2022, this one is powered by the Ryzen 9 6900HS. Now this is not the absolute top of the stack, that's the 6980HX. Those are coming in some larger, you know, purely gaming machines and workstation class systems. But the 6900HS is an eight core 16 thread part with a max turbo boost of 4.9 gigahertz. And then integrated on that process is a Radeon 680M RDNA 2 GPU with uh, 12 cores and a max boost of 2.4 gigahertz. Now the rest of the system consists of a discrete Radeon RX 6800S GPU. Now that's the updated 6000 series that was announced at CES with faster memory attached and some tweaks to the frequencies. And there's also 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM in this system and NVMe PCIe Gen 4 SSD and then all the connectivity you expect like Bluetooth 5.2 and 802.11 AX Wi-Fi 6E. Which brings us to the absolutely gorgeous 14 inch display. The display is definitely one of the strong suits on this latest Zephyrus G14. So the machine's rocking a 14 inch QHD display. That's a 2560 by 1600 resolution with a 120 Hertz refresh rate and three millisecond response time. It's 500 nits of maximum brightness. It's plenty bright for just about any circumstances. It offers 100% coverage of DCI-P3. It's Pantone validated. It has FreeSync support built in, so adaptive refresh rate technology built in. And it also has Dolby Vision HDR support. So the display is also has a matte finish. It's not a glossy display, so reflections are not an issue. And just in practice, with that fast refresh rate and quick response time and that extra vertical height due to the 1610 aspect, the display is really just a joy on this system. There's a couple of versions of this machine available, one with a simpler lid that has the perforations and the angular design but lacks the LEDs behind the lid. This one is the wild anime matrix version. So this one obviously has a bunch of LEDs behind the perforations and using the ASUS Armory Crate application, you can customize what animations play on the anime matrix. Now these LEDs obviously use a little bit of battery power and it adds a bit of height to the system too. The version with the anime matrix lid is about a one millimeter thicker than the standard version. On the right side of the machine you'll see a micro SD card slot, a USB type C port, a couple of USB type A ports, and some venting for the internal cooling system. On the left side you'll find a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, a USB type C port, a full-sized HDMI port, and this is the connector for the power adapter. It is a circular barrel connector, not USB type C on this guy. And there is more venting right here for the internal cooling system. 
And here's a quick shot of the bottom of the Zephyrus G14. So as you can see, there's plenty of perforations along the bottom. You have sort of this silver stylized centerpiece here, along with two anti-skid pads that run the length of the system. And at either corner, there are some additional perforations for the downfiring speakers. So apologies for the weird lighting in this shot, but I wanted to show you something on the back of the Zephyrus G14. So this is the rear edge of the system, and underneath the display along the back edge, if you look closely, you're going to see some indicator LEDs. So that's the power LED there. You might see the drive activity LED blinking every few seconds there, and there's a third one in between that'll indicate when the battery's charging. So that might seem like a weird spot for some indicator LEDs, but you can see them from the front of the system if you just sort of tilt your head up and look along that edge. ASUS does something really smart to help the G14's cooling as well. So you'll notice with the lid mostly closed, the machine is sitting flat on the surface here. But if I open up the lid, once we get past 90 degrees, the bottom of the machine lifts up. And now there's a channel where air can get under there much easier. So that allows for easier airflow under the system where it's expelled out these vents here. The keyboard on this latest version of the G14 is very reminiscent of the original with a couple of minor updates. If you recall, the original had some funky shaped keys. That's no longer the case on this version. Just a typical 14 inch keyboard layout with chiclet style keys. And below it, you have this nice large trackpad. So key travel is very good. I had no trouble typing on this machine at all. There's a bit of flex in the middle if you're really a keyboard masher, but I don't foresee anybody having any issues at all. Also found the trackpad to be very good. So mousing around, no issue at all. Multi-finger gesture input is also no problem. And it had no problem picking up palm touches. Uh, palm rejection is very good. You'll also note at the top of the keyboard deck, a couple of more ports for the speakers and some extra buttons right here. These are for volume control to disable the microphone and to open up the Armory Crate application. Obviously with a powerful platform inside, this latest Asus Zephyrus G14 is super fast. So we have a full in-depth review at Hot Hardware where you can see an array of benchmarks, battery life scores, all that kind of good stuff. But here you see a speedometer test run of 215.9. And here we have a multi-threaded Cinebench R23 run. Well, you'll see in a test like this that can hammer all eight of those CPU cores and 16 threads is a score just north of 14,000. And this is with the machine running in turbo mode. If you run it in its um, default performance mode, it's a little bit lower, about 12 to 13,000. With a powerful processor and Radeon RX 6800S inside the machine, gaming and graphics is obviously one of the G14 strong suits. In a 3D Mark Time Spy run like you see here, the machine's going to score somewhere north of 9100. We have lots more data to pour through over in the full review at hothardware.com, including battery life and power data. What I can say in our custom video rundown test, battery life was phenomenal. The machine lasted around 476 minutes in that test. But in a gaming rundown test where you're just hammering on everything in the machine, battery life lasts about an hour. Charging is relatively quick though with that 240 watt power brick that's included. In terms of noise output, when it's getting hammered on with a heavy gaming workload, like right now it's running 3D Mark, if I shut my mouth, you'll see it peaks at around 50 dB, maybe 51 dB. So yes, that's definitely audible, but really par for the course for a gaming notebook and not that bad at all. We hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the Asus Zephyrus G14 updated for 2022. If you dug this video, do us a solid and please like and subscribe to the channel. And also stop by hothardware.com to get your fill of the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this is Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by.